Hello, everyone. It's good to be with you. Thanks for joining us. I do appreciate those of you that uh, show up and are part of what we're doing here. It is I just kind of realizing that what we've done with our Sunday class is we've kind of taken the components and um, kind of deconstructed it, if you will, so that we have a teaching part and we have uh, the worship part uh, with uh, Pastor Steve and Luann Asmuth. And then we have the, we've had the health tracks part with Sandy Grove, RN. And uh, it's, it's, we've got the same content, but we're spreading it around and making it available to more people wherever they're at. So I thank you when you're able to join us, whether it's here on our City View Facebook page, over on our uh, City View 55 Plus page, or we also have our 50, 50, City View um, 55 uh, YouTube channel as well, where you can get all the content. We save it all there as well. So I hope you're able to join us on one of those and share share this with others as well. That's uh, the way that we keep the church strong and uh, and I think also get the gospel out as well. It's a great way to share your faith with others. So once again, thank you for being with us. It's been a lot going on with the world. There's a lot going on with uh, more and more people getting vaccinated. I think that is contributing a lot to our numbers going down. And as we see those numbers going down, then things begin to open up. And uh, that's exactly what we've been waiting for. And so we're just praying for the Lord's will to move forward through all this. I realize some of you are getting the vaccine and some of you are holding off a little bit and kind of want to see if uh, if I grow an extra set of ears or something like that. But I've, got, I've gotten uh, both my vaccines and uh, so far doing very well with it. And um, I think it is contributing to the progress, not only here in the United States, but around the world. So. And I understand if those people are just saying, you know, it might not be for me. But uh, I, I think as long as everybody's doing their best, that's what we are looking for. But the numbers are going down, and that's heartening because that means we are opening up the church. We have begun uh, church services inside, also offering the outdoor, outdoor services as well. So those are continuing on Sundays at 10 o'clock. We also have our online service and seen some of you show up there. Great to have you join us there. It's a live stream, so you'll be, get to be joining others in real time at the service as you uh, participate at the 10 o'clock hour. And uh, we also have something special at the church this week. As you, as you, if you're a part of City View Church, you know that we have the annual missions conference. Well, with COVID, obviously things have been a lot different. So what we are doing this year is um, we will be having the services at the church, but we won't be having the banquet and a lot of the big, big events that we've had in the past. Uh, and our missionaries are kind of staying put as well this year. We have a guest speaker coming up on the second week, a very wonderful speaker at that time. Looking forward to that. But we are going to continue to keep on that theme for two weeks. And so um, that begins this Sunday. It's 10 o'clock and uh, both the, the live service and online. So I hope you can make it. But since we aren't having the banquet, we have, do have something special coming up for 55 plus. And that is um, it's we've got St. Patrick's Day just around the corner. It's coming up next week. So we thought we'd take this Sunday to have a special Sunday brunch for 55 plus. And we'll do that right after church. So we're, we're able to open the church campus indoors, not just for services, but we're beginning to experiment as well with uh, special events also. And so this will be our first uh, kind of a grand re-entry, if you will, to a, an event for our senior adults. So I hope you're able to make it. It's uh, we Because of COVID, it's kind of bring your own lunch. We can't provide the meal, but... But, uh, but you can provide the fellowship. That's the most important part. As a matter of fact, if you just want to come and enjoy that at 11 o'clock this Sunday on March 14th, that would be great. But if you're bringing a lunch, you can use the kitchen to um, use the refrigerator or the microwave if you need to. And uh, we'll be providing rest, uh, the refreshments or the, or the beverages. And it's appropriate for St. Patrick's. I don't know if you thought of this, but St. Patrick was a missionary. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the first great missionaries of the church and of our faith, and he brought the gospel. To Ireland, and uh, and so we have that is why we celebrate St. Patrick's Day. People don't often we kind of miss that big part of what St. Patrick's Day is all about. But really, that is the central event. That, that's what puts St. Patrick on the map for uh, for America, and that is why we celebrate. So there's a lot of other things that go down because of that. Celebrating being Irish and uh, just having fun, but um, we know that the the key is St. Patrick himself and what he did. So very appropriate for this missions conference that we would start with that. So that's that, that uh, Sunday brunch for 55 plus is going to be at 11 o'clock in the fellowship center. And we hope you can join us there. If you can't, we understand some people are holding back a little bit, but I'm looking forward to seeing many, many fresh faces, many new faces as well. So open to all. 
uh, to uh, to new new people as well as those that have been part of the Sunday class. So um, look forward once again to seeing you there. Well, um, you probably noticed um, again Edie has a lot going on with school, and sometimes on Fridays that just happens to be days where she can either uh, visit with her mom who lives up there, or there's things that are going on with the school, and so. Uh, that does, she'd love to be here, but she is not able to do that. And so, so you're with, you're just stuck with me again. So, but, um, uh, but it is a pleasure for me to be able to share with you. And thank you for being here for this time. Um, we're looking at our lockdown letters. And so we are in Ephesians, we're in chapter four. And we're, so we'll be continuing with that today. And um, so from Ephesians 4, we are looking at really what uh, the, the few, first few verses here contain, key verse for this passage, and for, really for the book of Ephesians. So that will be the fourth verse that we'll be looking at here today. So, um, but really, um, as you know, with Paul's letters, um, he begins with the first half of them. Typically, uh, it is kind of the theology, and then the second half is the practice. So how do we take these ideas and concepts and lofty ideals and put them to practice in in our work. And of course, for us in Ephesians, uh, he there, he's there in lockdown in Rome, and he's writing a letter to the church. And so he's writing uh, words of encouragement. He can't be felt, he can't be enjoying fellowship, but uh, he's uh, wants to encourage the church to continue to grow in that way as they grow in unity and oneness and make that a, a place of strength that they're operating from so they can care the, share the gospel with confidence. And so that is when some of Paul's finest writings do occur. And so now as we kind of turn the page into the second half, the application of the book of Ephesians, uh, this is where Paul picks up. And so beginning with verse one, I therefore, let me just get the right, the, the, the light just right here. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you. Um, this is really tricky, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to pause just a second here. Well, thank you for sticking with, with me there. Uh, my notes were in the shadows here, so it was really hard for me to see, but now we've got enough light, so I will, we'll start over here. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to live and to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity in the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one, sp one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Well, wonderful words that, that we have here. And um, so that first portion I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling you have received. So important for us to remember that this is a calling that all of us have received. The calling is not just for those in positions of clergy or, or um, uh, maybe volunteers, but uh, sometimes we think of those special people that this is only their work. Well, we understand the priesthood of all believers includes all of us. So we've all been called. And I think it would be important for all of us to just to consider it just as much as any any person who would be called any any preacher you might respect, whether it be Billy Graham, uh, Pastor Troy, or whomever it might be, uh, that you would consider that your calling is on the same level as theirs. And so that means that your life is transformed and you are God's vessel. And what you do is, is a testimony to what God is doing. So we are to live worthy of that. What does that mean? I believe that that means that we are to show ourselves um, uh, res res worthy of respect, that we are to be consistent in our application of the word, that our attitudes are loving and gentle, uh, that we are not haughty or proud, that we are, most of all, I think, connected to those in the world around us and showing Christ's love to them. I think that is a showing of worthiness, because certainly that is what God wants to show to, to us and has shown through us to others. And so we are to show that uh, to others as well. And so we are to live worthy in that way. It's the calling by which you, by which you were called. Um, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. So how are we to show that? 
there's four things right there. All lowliness and gentleness. Another passage says humility. So that's one way that you can show. Um, Paul is very specific here about how this can be done. So it's attain attainable. So attitudes of um, superiority, looking down at others, exclusivism, those are not things that are, are compat compatible with the teachings of Jesus Christ and what Paul is wanting to, to get through to us here. But rather, humility is what we need to, which means every single person we meet, every person, you know, we're often challenged by voices in our culture and sometimes voices online and a lot of hostility to, toward the church. Well, who are we to love? We are to love every single one. And we are to get the, the love that we share is to be genuine, genuine as well from the heart. Um, and gentleness there again, I sometimes see people not really acting with a great deal of gentleness, but rather a sense of sometimes uh, of being kind of authoritarian and uh, uh, lording it over people in a variety of ways. And uh, that does not show the gentleness of the Lord that we are specifically um, called to show here uh, with long suffering or patience. OK, so that means we don't let people get our goat. You know, we uh, we are we are. Uh, we, it's a better idea sometimes just to learn the skill of listening rather than trying to get our opinion out. Um, I don't know if you've noticed it, but sometimes it's kind of hard. People are not really asking to be to, to, to have their minds changed in our world. So what is if that is the case with maybe half of our world this day these days, uh, how are we to address that? Well, I think one way is to be listening and to not be trying to change everybody's minds. Um, Bearing with one another in love. And I think that that uh, kind of puts an amen on what I just said. Bearing with one another in love. And that has to do not only with people uh, outside the church, but with people inside the church as well. Uh, these days of COVID, there's been a lot of different opinions about various things. There's opinions about vaccines and opinions about mask wearing and opinions about elections and various other things that have been very challenging for the church. And uh, what we are challenging, we are uh challenge to do that to here is to bear with one another in love. So that's very important to do. And the next verse really doubles down on that, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Um, so basically, uh, other versions talk about just that doing everything you can, making that your goal, just to preserve the bond of peace. Whose job is that? It's not the leadership. It's not the people making them trouble. It's your job to to preserve the bond of peace, and of course, not to get in scraps with with um, others either in the body of Christ or outside the body of Christ. So, doing whatever you can to maintain that bond in the spirit as well. So, know that you're not alone in this. And sometimes I think we feel like I've got to be able to manage this all within myself. But if we know that we have a companion in the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, then I believe that we do have the promise that we, and the confidence that we will succeed in these areas. And then here we again, we uh, lead up to our key verse for the book of Ephesians. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. And so, there you have it, that, that call to unity is, is, is basically us asking, what are the things we agree on? Well, we just, we just, we just read the list there. Um, one body, really, there's just one church, isn't there? There's one spirit. You were called in one hope. And uh, uh, that there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. And so that is really what to, uh, we need to come, keep coming back to, uh, that sense of unity, way different than what the, the world is prescribing these days. I think there are some people that are calling for that, but uh, I think certainly, and especially within the church, we, we share a united front there. And, uh, in, and on the things that matter, not on the things that don't, not on the things that are distractions, not on the worldly things that are of little consequence in the scheme of, of eternity, but really the things that do matter most. So that is our, our word and our challenge for for our time together here from God's word. 
And so we just ask that God would add his blessing to that. Well, we want to pray for you, and we want to pray for your home and for the things that are going on in your life, but we also want to pray together. So we're asking everybody that is part of this that um, we want to continue to pray, Second Chronicles 7.14. And uh, make that something that we are united in prayer for as we um, are focused on seeing an end to this pandemic, but more a spiritual healing for our nation. If, I'm, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, we just read that, didn't we? And pray, and seek my face and turn from the things that displease God, turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. We so much need that. And I trust that as you have done that yourself, you would even think even maybe this day, maybe this week, there have been things that you've done that displease God. And, and uh, But an important part of that does say there that God would heal. He would hear, he would heal. And so we need to receive that. And maybe if it helps you, you've heard me say this before, say, God, I receive your forgiveness. When we ask to forgive, don't just leave it out there. But really hear God speaking back to us, my son, my daughter, you are forgiven. And what I did on the cross completed it all. And there's nothing else that you can do. Nothing else at all that you can do. And so and just sense the peace of God wash over you as he lifts that burden of sin as you pray for, ask for his forgiveness. And then of course, heal our land. So it's, it's, it's an if-then proposition, isn't it? These are the things that we must do. God is faithful. He will do his part when we do our part. And so we want to be faithful tonight to do that. So let's pray. Father, we do ask, Father, that you would uh, heal this pandemic. We humble ourselves before you. We empty ourselves and place ourselves at your feet, trusting only in you and what you have done in us. We know that is the only thing that will last. So based on your forgiveness, based on who we are in you, who you have created us to be, indeed, our life is in your hands. You have placed us here for such a time as this. So we, we ask, Father God, that in confidence that you would heal our land, heal our land. You put an end to this pandemic. We pray that you would be with those who are on the front lines, the health workers, healthcare workers, keeping them safe, giving them endurance. We pray for a touch to those who are experiencing this and just about everybody I know, know somebody who has been touched by by COVID in a, in, in a pretty strong way and some have lost loved ones as a result. And so we want to lift those up to you as well. We pray that you would be with them in their grief and in their loss. And probably, Father, we pray for an end. And whether that is through your sovereign will or through the use of the field of medicine, however you want to do that, Father, we are going to give you all the credit. And we are already seeing the downturn, a significant from, I think, over 5,000 cases to uh, under 500 in San Diego. And uh, so that is a reduction of 90%, which is huge. And it's continuing to decrease, Father. So we thank you. We ask your continued blessing. Father, for each one here, we give you thank, we thanks, praise in Jesus Christ pray for their households. We pray that there would be peace there. We pray, Father God, for provision in their lives. We pray for health and for safety, for peace of mind and confidence in you, Father. We pray for strength as they move forward, and we pray as things begin to thaw. We, we pray for, for um, wisdom, for how people, how quickly or how slowly people will move forward with this. We pray for each one that each would do their best each would do their best, Father God, as we follow your leading. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being here. Once again, it is so good to have you join us. I trust you will check into our other our other content, uh, Sandy Grove, RN, uh, both at our City View page and our 55 Plus page, as well as uh, the wonderful Worship Times. Don't you just love it? Uh, with Pastor Steve and Luann Asmuth. They are just so wonderful. Sometimes I just put it on and just smile. I don't always sing along. I know some of you enjoy that part as well, but it certainly lifts my spirits. And so I trust you will have the opportunity not only to listen to that, but to share each one of those with friends. So thank you for doing that. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We hope to see you for the missions conference and a wonderful St. Patrick's Day. God bless you.